Welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and also welcome to those of you watching on Forbes and as you can see I've uh, taken this uh, rather swanky Asus ROG Crosshair 7 Hero Wi-Fi motherboard out of my uh, AMD press pack. Um, this is one of two motherboards that I received direct from AMD to uh, test its new Ryzen 2nd generation CPUs and uh, you can see my unboxing of those CPUs in another video um, as well as a look at the MSI board which is also in the box and um, also Gigabyte's X470 Aorus Gaming 7 Wi-Fi, which I received separately from Gigabyte. So, this video, of course, is all about the, uh, the, king of, the king of the hill as far as Asus is concerned, which is the new Crosshair 7 Hero. Now, this is the Wi-Fi model, and uh, it does, of course, support the uh, X470 chipset, and is compatible not just with Ryzen 2nd generation CPUs, but also with first gen CPUs as well. So let's get it out of the box here, so we can start taking a look at it. I've literally not even opened this yet, so I'm just going to remove some of the protective plastic and all that stuff. Let's uh, move the box down there for a minute. And uh, here we go. Um, Crosshair, usually, as you'd expect from Asus, it's sporting a you know sort of dark, moody theme. Um, doesn't look that dissimilar to the original Crosshair, to be honest, but um, what you do get is an extra four pin. Uh, CPU power header up there to provide the extra power for the uh, the new CPUs. That's um, something that you won't necessarily get on uh, the previous generation boards. I don't think there might have been like some kind of crazy high end boards uh, that might that might have had it. But as far as I can remember, I, I think most M4 boards just had the, um, the standard uh, eight pin connector at the top there. So I can show you that. It's a bit difficult because the board is so tall. And um, yeah, so there's, there's not a whole lot that's changed. You've got a, uh, a separate heatsink up here for uh, M.2 SSDs. It's one big chunk of, uh, of aluminium there. And um, the only downside to that is that you're, you know, you're kind of, it's kind of cramped in that area above your graphics card. It's going to be blocked by the dim slots and your processor cooler as well. So um, in terms of cooling, it's probably not the best place for that. Um, and uh, doesn't look like you can actually transplant that heatsink down to the bottom slot here. This bottom slot will almost certainly have you know better cooling, um, so it's possibly where I put the uh, the SSD, especially if you if you've got better you know a really decent um, airflow in your case. Um, so there's a, a huge bunch of things going on with this board. Um, you get loads and loads of fan headers. Um, you've got one down here, three up here for your case and power and uh, CPU. Another one down here and a couple more on the bottom of the bottom of the board. So fully featured as far as controlling your fans and that kind of thing. And uh, all the mod cons in terms of power and reset buttons, you've got an LED postcode display up the top there, uh, USB 3.1 header, and uh, my goodness, yeah, there's an absolute ton of features on this board, isn't there? So um, flipping around to the back, the IO shield, as you can see, it's one of the uh, the integrated ones. Gigabyte's also doing that with its X470 Aorus Gaming 7, which is arguably slightly better looking than the Crosshair, I have to admit. But it's still nice to see an integrated I.O. panel, I for one, I'm tired of cutting my fingers on those damn things. Um, and there's a load of USB ports here. You've got two USB 2 ports, eight USB 3 ports, and of course you've got the USB 3.1 Type-A and Type-C ports there as well. And this model, as I mentioned earlier, has onboard Wi-Fi, and over the, re over the rear you've got um, the SS USB BIOS flashback, which allows you to update your BIOS even without a CPU in the socket and the all-important CMOS clear switch, although to be honest, most boards these days tend to recover fairly well from those overzealous overclocks. So I don't have a price for this board yet, um, but it's obviously, you know, punching for the uh, the top end, you know, the flagship uh, board from Asus. It's, um, it's going to be one of the more expensive boards on the market. Uh, the Crosshair 6 is still available, so um, with that being sort of forwards and backwards compatible, um, it's kind of questionable as to whether this board will be worth it in the long run, but I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the extra power circuitry um, uh, details and the extra power that this board can provide is probably going to make a difference, especially when overclocking AMD's new uh, second generation Ryzen CPUs. Okay, so time for a bit of unboxing, and uh, we're going to flip everything out of the box here. So there's not a whole bunch of accessories, certainly not compared to the Asus uh, ROG Zenith extreme motherboard for Threadripper, that was just just uh, like an absolute accessory fest in the box, which was uh, kind of maybe drool all over it. It was absolutely amazing. Um, so you get the obvious, you know, SATA ports, 
Uh, you get a couple of RGB extension headers because obviously uh, you know Asus is really big on RGB lighting at the moment. There's plenty of that going on on the crosshair with uh, onboard LEDs and headers. You get the uh, on Wi-Fi um, Wi-Fi desktop aerial. That's obviously only only available in the uh, the Wi-Fi version of the crosshair, which this one is of course. And uh, also here is the usual SLI switch. So not a whole bunch of things going on in the accessory department. Uh, what you do get which might be interesting to some, is a 20% discount code at CableMod. Um, CableMod are absolutely awesome if you want uh, some custom coloured and custom length cables for your power supply. I can highly recommend them. I've had several kits in from them, uh, and I'm actually waiting for the latest one uh, that they're going to send me for a new ITX rig that you'll be able to uh, see here on YouTube soon. And um, that's it as far as the Asus Crosshair is concerned. So I'm just going to close the box and take a final look at the motherboard. Here he is. So, um, I haven't got a price for the crosshair yet, but as soon as I do, I'll be putting the links uh, below, because I think um, a lot of the Ryzen second gen products, motherboards and uh, processors included, will be up for pre-order today, uh, when, I've posted, when I've posted this video, if not very shortly after. So uh, make sure you check the links below for, um, for links to those, if you want to uh, get onto the Ryzen second generation bandwagon before anybody else. And, um, I'd also like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. I've got plenty more content coming up with Ryzen and uh, feature builds and all kinds of things. And uh, again, I'd like to thank AMD for sending me this sample um, of, uh, via Asus and uh, as long as, uh, along with the press pack. And don't forget to subscribe, as I say, because I've got plenty more gummies coming up. And uh, all that's left to say is thanks for watching.